Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave and on this channel we talk about wealth and wealth creation. And today we're going to do a live options trade using Fidelity Investments. So I'm going to talk you through the whole thing from start to finish and I'm going to show you exactly how it works. So if it does help, the only thing you got to do is click that little like button. Now let's get started. Whoop. Okay, so I assume you've logged into your Fidelity account and you're sitting here on your position screen. So if you want to make an options trade, the very first thing you're going to want to do is go up to your trade button and click trade. Your trading box is going to pop open and it defaults to stocks and ETFs, but from the drop down you should be able to select options. And that'll change the box to the options trading box. That's what we're going to call it. We've just dubbed it the options trading box. but. Um, if you don't see that transaction type, that probably means you do not have uh, permission from Fidelity to trade options yet. So you want to go fill out an options agreement or contact them and tell them that you want options trading on this account. So they're going to want to know if you uh, have some experience or not. Um, and this is just a way that Fidelity protects themselves, right? They're going to be watching to make sure that uh, they're not taking advantage of anyone. So that's a good thing, right? Uh, symbol today. We're going with BABA. So I've already done my research on Alibaba and it's dropped considerably re recently and it's at a good position now, I think, where you can jump in and sell a put. So that's actually what I'm going to be doing when I do this live execution. But, you know, with that said, we'll kind of go over, uh, you know, the different options when we do our simple strategy, which is calls and puts, right? We're not going to do a caller combo roller straddle. We're just staying with calls and puts here, introductory uh, start to this trade. So it does let you know what it's currently trading at. So you're going to want to know that number. And then you're going to have an option down here to, uh, you know, buy to open, buy to close, sell to open, and sell to close. And this is where it kind of gets confusing, I think, for people when you decide what is my action going to be? You know, am I selling? No, what, what is it? What does it mean? So. If you're buying to open a position, right? Think of it as you're opening a position. And then if you ever want to close it, you're going to be closing a position. So in this case, I'm selling to open, but we'll show you, we're going to come back to this because they all kind of work and work together. All right. And I'm going to do one contract. All right. One contract equals how many shares? 100 shares. So important to note, one contract equals 100 shares. And I'm looking at an expiration date, and I usually trade relatively short options. I'm going out to April Fool's Day. Uh, hopefully, I'm not the fool. And I'm looking at the $210 strike price. So again, I've already kind of played this out on how I think it should work and what my return on my investment will be. So I will go over those numbers at the end. Then here at the last uh, box, you get to select whether it's a call or a put. So in this case, I'm saying you can put it to me and I'm willing to buy Alibaba at $210 by April 1st. You can put it to me by that date um, if it falls below the strike price. They can put it to me either way, but um, they're going to put it to me if it falls below 210, okay? And right now it's trading at 228. So almost 18, so about uh, just under 9% away from its current position. So the next thing is order type. If you roll down here, you've got market and limit orders are the two that I stick with. When I'm trading options, I don't want to think about um, later in the day if it drops, right? You want current information because news can come out and change things quickly. So I don't want bad news to come out, good news to come out. I want to know exactly what I'm making this trade. I want to execute it when I make this trade. So I'm always doing them at market or at limit. Um, and that's going to tell you your max gain over here. And this is where it gets kind of interesting. When you look at your bid and ask, right? It's saying for one contract, you'll get $1.46 per share. Since it's 100 shares, that'll be $146 premium. And the ask is $153 premium. So it's going to, at the market, it'll execute usually right about that $1.46. But if you were to set it to limit, then you could set your limit price to say, Hey, I want a dollar 47 for this. And you can, you know, you can work with that a little bit. If it, you know, if you're trying to squeeze out a little bit more premium or you're determined to get a certain amount off this trade. 
So for this one, we're going to say market and we're gonna execute it there. And if you click over to max gain, max loss, this is also a, a very interesting box because when you're selling puts or when you're buying calls or doing any of these types of trades, you're gonna see in this box another warning from Fidelity, right? So this says your max gain is going to be $146, great. But your max loss is a very scary substantial. So what does that mean? Well, if you're buying, you know, uh, Alibaba at 210 and you're willing to give them this option out to April 1st, what if Alibaba goes to zero? Well, then it's your max loss of $21,000, right? Because that's the collateral that I need to keep to cover this trade, right? So $210 per share, 100 shares is $21,000. So if this Alibaba goes to zero between now and then, I'm stuck in this trade then, wow, I lose $21,000. Has that ever happened? No. Does it happen very often? No. But it's a warning to make sure you understand what's going on here. And the last line is a break even, right? So even if this executes, even if it falls to $209 and it does get put to me in this trade, well, I still made a little bit of money because my break even is 208.54, right? So basically, if you take this 208 and you take that max gain, you add them together, you would get that $210 strike price. Simple, right? Last thing down here is the, uh, the, we can look at the order book, but the last change in bid and ask in volume. So you can kind of see where it's been trading at recently, and that's actually what's setting up your bid and ask up here. So you can see the last trade executed at $1.48. So there's a very, even though you say market, it doesn't mean it's gonna be $1.46. It could be $1.48. So, that's how that works. So let's take a look at this and manipulate the data a little bit so we have a better understanding of puts and calls. So currently we have this to sell to open a one put, right? So they have the option of putting it to me at that strike price. But if I was to change this to buy to open, right? So now we're buying the put. You're gonna kind of see the opposite side of this transaction. So now, the max gain is substantial, but the max loss is only that $158 that it costs you to pay that premium to the person. So you have the option to put it to them at 210. So now you're essentially betting that the stock's going down below 210 and it's going to have to go all the way down past 208.42 for you to start collecting that premium. Hopefully that makes sense. Because I think playing with this a little bit and understanding how this all keys together will help you get a lot more comfortable with trading options. And just to look at it a little bit deeper, let's go to uh, buy to open and let's say we think the stock is gonna go through the roof, right? It's been dropping recently and we think it's gonna go through the roof. We wanna go all the way out to a, maybe a $235 strike price on a call, right? So now we're buying to open the call we're betting it's going to go up above 235 by April 1st. That's going to cost us $415 for that one contract. But our max gain is unlimited. Super excited now, right? This is going to Vegas, baby. This is <laughs> this is saying Alibaba is going to $1,000. By going to $1,000, I'm going to make, ooh, who knows, 1,000 minus 235 times your $100, uh, our 100 shares, right? That's that's why. It only costs you $415 to have that, you know, probably that, that, that option of going that high. That's Las Vegas, that's the slot machines. But um, like I said, I don't usually try to trade too many. Uh, I don't usually buy calls and puts. I'm a seller typically. And you can watch that in some of my other videos. I'll link them above. But uh, yeah, so this is the other opposite side of this transaction where we're buying to open and we're doing a call. And the final version of this is if you were going to, instead of buy to open the call, now we're going to sell to open right so in this case let's let's consider you've you bought alibaba a few months ago or, or you got put the stock before and it's a 228 now and you want to get out of this trade and you're going to sell a call one contract april 1st at 235 dollars so if it goes to 235 dollars the person on the other side of the transaction can call it away from you right and for that you get to collect a premium of 400 dollars but your max loss, again, the scary part, right? If you see this and you're not used to it and you have that fear in your mind, 
well, wow, this is a big problem because my max loss is unlimited, right? If this stock goes to $1,000, what happens? Well, nothing really happens. You still keep your 400 bucks, but the fact that it goes to 1,000, you're kind of like going, darn it, I wish I wouldn't have done that because I could have had that stock appreciation of going all the way to $1,000 a share or whatever. So that's the fourth side. So I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, ask some questions below. We'll go through these again. Okay, so let's go and let's execute this trade. So we are going to sell to open one contract April 1st. And I said, what was that price? $210 strike price. You can put it to me if it falls below there. I'm going to collect about $146. Bid and ask is right there. You can see there's a pretty good spread here. So I'm guessing that I'm actually going to execute this for a little bit more. But if I go to preview this order, it's going to show me exactly what I just said. All right, so April 1st, 210 put, validate, validate, make sure it looks right. Okay, I'm gonna make $146, but my max loss is substantial. Uh, but luckily I understand what all that means. I'm ready and I place my order. All right, so the great thing about uh, Fidelity, there, there it goes, see, and it notifies me on my phone as well. So as soon as this is executed, that money's in my account, I'm ready to spend it on something else. So now you can see that in a few different places, right? You can manage orders, enter new orders, view option chains from here. If you close that down and you go over to, uh, let's see, activity and orders. So now I'm over here and I'm looking at my activity and I can see that this execution happened today, filled at $1.50, right? So like I said, they had a little bit of a price improvement. And if I look at this, so it says filled, Alibaba, you know, one contract, um, total price improvement. So yeah, they're saying we're working for you. Fidelity's working for you. And, uh, I can also see this information down here in my history, you know, it'll say it's processing right now, but that $149 and 30 cents, there's a little transaction fee that comes off that is mine. And there it is. It shows that executed tra transaction. So I jumped back into this order just to show you one other thing, and that's the option chain down here. So you can spend some time as you get more comfortable with this, with this option chain. When you click that, it's going to show you everything about Alibaba and give you a better breakdown. So whatever stock that you're uh, trying to sell options against, um, that security, you're going to see everything lined out here. Okay, and it breaks down into calls and puts on the left and right here, and then by date. So as you get a little bit more familiar with this, you should be able to get good information out of here, be able to decide your trades, you know, and, and just, you know, get more comfortable with the whole idea. Step in slowly and don't get too greedy too quickly, all right? Be conservative till you get your mind wrapped around how to do these types of trades and what you're actually comfortable with. Do you? Yeah, so that just happened. Hopefully that helped. You know, I hope... This helped answer questions about trading options on Fidelity. Hopefully we filled in some of the blanks. But if you still have questions, please shout down below. Otherwise, just like and subscribe. And we will see you next time. Thanks for listening. Have a great night. Woo!